I'm Ben with G2 Engineering and in this video I want to talk about our line of three-legged kinematic mounts and specifically I want to show how we can make these mounts highly ruggedized, resistant to film and particulate contamination and in addition having a very high load carrying capacity. So to see how we do this, the best starting point is the traditional three-groove kinematic mount, which has three mating elements, each constraining two degrees of freedom for a total of six degrees of freedom and a full kinematic constraint. Now these mounts are very useful because they provide the ability to have highly repeatable assembly and they guarantee there's no mechanical stress caused in any of the components due to assembly tolerances or temperature changes and CTE deformations. And these mounts function very well. But where they run into trouble is with load carrying capacity. And to understand why, we need to look closer into the mating elements themselves. Each mating element is a sphere that travels along the axis of a V-groove and it's very important that it travel freely because it ha that's how it finds its kinematic solution. And the problem is that the sphere touches the sides, the walls of the V-groove in only two points. And so under very light loads already the sphere is creating a small deformation in the side of the V-groove. And this deformation makes it difficult for the sphere to travel up and down the groove and this degrades the performance of the mount. And what's worse, under moderate loads, that deformation becomes plastic, becomes permanent. And once that happens, the sphere has a preferred location on the V-groove and it stops traveling up and down the groove. And at that point, the functionality of the mount is ruined. Now, to fix that, what we've done is we're introducing a solid body that is half of a cylinder and half of a sphere. We call it the spherolinder. And it has the property that the center of the sphere lies on the axis of the cylinder. And once we place the spherolinder in the V-groove, it touches the walls of the V-groove along two parallel lines distributing the load. And this already increases load capacity by two orders of magnitude, by a hundredfold. And in addition, these contact lines are already parallel to the direction of motion. So in a similar manner, they reduce the resistance of motion, the resistance against motion of the spherolinder within the V-groove. Once we place the spherolinder in the V-groove, we already have a spherical top surface. So the top component of the mating element is not going to be a cone, but rather not going to be a sphere, sorry, but rather a cone. And the cone fits on top and it contacts the sphere also along a line. And so the load carrying capacity is preserved. And one of the nice things here is that the radius of curvature hasn't changed when we moved from point contact to line contact. So if you look at a contact between a cylinder and a plane, it still has that radius of curvature which allows it to be resistant to, to any film that is formed on the surface because it can simply displace it and also makes it resistant against, against particles that are trapped in there because they are not going to get trapped between two parallel surfaces. So to complete the mount we put three spherolinders in the V-grooves and just like with the original mount the direction of the V-grooves has to be roughly towards the center of the triangle but not necessarily precisely aligned and the top component now instead of having three spheres has three cones in it so when it fits over the top it contacts the spherolinders that move in their grooves and find the kinematic solution and the mount is complete now in fact when we use one inch mating components and this is the actual product that we have. Those were just uh, aluminum demo units. When we use a hardened steel connector, we rate the load capacity per each one of these mount points at 2 metric tons, or 4,000 pounds, or 80 of these 50 pound weights stacked all the way up to the ceiling on each of these 
mount points. Now, clearly a meter scale assembly rarely weighs six metric tons, but this very high load carrying capacity comes in very handy in dynamic environments, for example, as in component attached to rockets or airplanes or even all-terrain ground vehicles. And also when there is repeatable assembly, like in robotics, when a robot would want to take a large tool and plunk it down and have it register to within a micron, and yet not have to slow down and come down really slow to make the attachment, but just place it and be registered. So, I'll remove the weights. And this demonstration unit showcases the product. What we have here is a blue and red component which represent the two halves of your system, the ones you want to mate together. And the silver stainless steel components are the spherulinder product and each stack has the V-groove, the spherulinder, and the cone. And additionally, we have a tooling ball and two LVDTs that measure its position relative to the blue component indicating repeatability. The readout resolution on these LVDTs is one micron or 40 micro inches, which is just at the edge of what a mechanical measurement tip can measure reliably. So overall precision of this setup is about plus minus one micron. And what I'm showing here is basically simple repeatability. I've shown that I can have just simple film contamination. We're also not in a clean room or any special environment. And clearly we're also impact resistant. And as I said, load capacity of each one of these mounting points is two metric tons. Now, I've shown the one inch product. We make the sphere linders in several sizes. The standard sizes are M25 or one inch and M10. We've made them as large as M50 and as small as M5. The load capacity is roughly proportional to the square of the diameter. In addition to the sphere linders, we have a similar product using a pretty much the same principle in which we have a spherical surface that travels along the line. Except what we've done with this product is we've folded the V-groove and cylinder part of it into the sphere. So we get a much lower profile and a more compact mating element. And in this particular case, we also have it configured to attach directly to optical tables and optical breadboards. So what it gives you is the ability to have an optical sub-assembly that can be replaced on your optical table with a repeatability of one micron. Because of the changes we've made to it, we've scaled back performance a little bit, and so each one of the mount points here is only rated for 500 kilograms. So, what I've done here is surveyed the set of three-legged kinematic mounts that we make. We also make four-legged kinematic mounts, and to see how that works, please tune into the video called Four-Legged Kinematic Mounts, also on our website. And thanks again very much for your time. And I'm Ben with G2 Engineering.